three out of our four holes, we've, we've drilled more than a gram per ton over about more than 135 meters. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty stellar. These are systems where uh, where cutoff grades can be very low. At, at, at Fort Knox in Alaska, for example, you know, their cutoff grade there is 0.1 grams per ton. Um, and so to hit uh, more than 10 times that over, over such a big interval is uh, is pretty exciting. Hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today I'm joined by Scott Burdahl, who is the co-founder, CEO and director of Snowline Gold. Snowline are focused on the Yukon Territory, where they have seven projects covering over 100,000 hectares and are currently focused on exploring their flagship Ineson and Rogue projects, which are located in the highly prospective yet historically underexplored Selwyn Basin. Uh, Scott, uh, great to see you today, joining us from the Yukon Territory. Um, if we could just get straight into things, um, you've had a, a pretty good start to the year. Um, recently put out three announcements, one after the other, about your valley uh, target there at the Rogue project. Um, tell us, what, what have you found? Yeah, so these are these are holes that we drilled in uh, September, and uh, we we're getting results in now, and I'm very happy to see them. Um, we've basically found a, a large bulk tonnage uh, gold system. Uh, with uh, you know three out of our four holes, we've we've drilled more than a gram per ton over well more than 135 meters. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty stellar. These are systems where uh, where cutoff grades can be very low. At at Fort Knox in Alaska, for example, you know their cutoff grade there is 0.1 grams per ton. Um, and so to hit uh, more than 10 times that over over such a big interval is uh, is pretty exciting. These were the first four holes drilled and. Uh, and, and you know we're just getting started out there. Mm. I mean, the latest hole, one hundred and sixty-eight point seven meters. I mean, you're you're seeing good consistency across the holes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the background grades are are nice and consistent, and then uh, and we're also seeing these kind of higher grade sweetener zones too. So uh, you know, within that interval, uh, you have a a, a zone uh, one point five meters carrying six point sixteen point two grams per ton gold. So. Uh, that's really encouraging to see. You know, the the background uh, values are are really what's carrying the the longer intervals, and so that would be you know a, a good consistent feed. But when you get uh, these higher grades coming in, that's just basically, you know, uh, that's free gold for your as far as your operational setups can for, concerned. Mm. And and how far apart have the whole holes been so far? What what area are we, are we talking about at the moment? At the moment, we're still in a fairly constrained area. The uh, the two uh, drill holes are about uh, uh, that we released just today. Uh, they're about sixty five meters apart, uh, and uh, they they're basically designed to start testing this nine hundred meter long trend. Um, so you know we're getting our legs under us, testing a few different uh, theories out there with these initial holes. Uh, it's easy to see in hindsight that you know it'd be nice to have those spread out further, but uh, luckily we have the twenty twenty two season to get out there and really test that extent. Absolutely. And in terms of the sort of depth uh, fr from surface, uh, how close are they to surface that the, the mineral mineralization starts? Uh, very close to surface. Uh, you know, the hole three, uh, that uh, that interval you mentioned, 168.7 meters, uh, that uh, starts right at surface. Wow. OK. And so for 2022, obviously more drilling ahead. What, what have you got planned? So uh, we'll be back in there. We have uh, the drill still on site, uh, ready to start turning uh, as soon as the spring arrives. Um, so we'll be out there with a pretty aggressive program. We're looking at uh, 3,000 plus meters on that target and then potentially pulling that drill off later in the season uh, to test some very similar looking tar targets nearby, particularly the gray season. Mm. And, and, and you've also had some success at your, at your other project at Ionson with the Jupiter target there. Um, some higher grades, uh, smaller intersections, but, but higher grades. Tell us about what you found there. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, Jupiter is extremely exciting and, and really a, a similar caliber of target. Uh, it's uh, like you say, it's higher grade, it's a structurally controlled system. So we're not looking for the big bulk tonnage sort of a target that we're looking for down at Valley, but we're looking for uh, very high grade gold veins. And uh, what we saw in our drilling there is basically not just those high grade veins, but uh, broad halos of mineralization in the, in the surrounding wall rock and, uh, and also repeated intervals per hole. So these things start to stack up, which is, uh, you know, extremely appealing from an exploration point of view. Mm. And how many holes have you drilled at uh, Jupiter so far? Uh, we've drilled 21 at Jupiter. Uh, at the start of the season, it was just a, a soil anomaly and a, a float drain, just these mineralized boulders that we didn't know where they were coming from. And, uh, and we spent a lot of the season up there uh, poking around and uh, 
uh, really got our uh, got a feel for the system. So far, we've drilled targets uh, across 1.1 kilometers of the broader three kilometer trend, and uh, and we've found mineralization from you know from the bottom to from the south end uh, up that 1.1 kilometers uh, to the north end of what we've drilled so far. So uh, we have a lot more work out there to do and uh, a lot to put together. Mm. And so for 2022, um, how many meters are you planning at Jupiter then? Similar to uh, similar to the Valley project, we're looking at uh, three thousand meters there with the with the second drill, and then potentially uh, pulling that drill off later in the season to test some uh, nearby structurally controlled zones, uh, particularly Avalanche Creek. Mm. I mean, yes, you have a number of, of other projects uh, in the area. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your your other sort of targets that you're looking at? Yeah, exactly. So you know, we we founded Snowline on the idea that there's this district scale, uh, well gold district out there that just hasn't really been explored before. And uh, and this is uh, these two discoveries in 2021 are a fantastic proof of concept that we're really onto something uh, big with that idea. But these were just sort of the first two that made the most logistical sense to drill. Um, and so these other targets are, are really analogous in a lot of ways to what we've drilled so far. Um, similar systems, Avalanche Creek is uh, looks to be a similar type of mineralization to Jupiter. And, uh, and the Grazy target looks like uh, the valley zone, except uh, without as much erosion, so you might have an even more intact system there. Uh, and then there, we probably have roughly a dozen other targets as well, spanning those two deposit types and a few other uh, gold systems that could sit on a spectrum with those. Mm. I mean, we should probably remind our viewers that although the, the company was only founded, uh, only listed sort of last year, uh, there's been a lot of work has gone into identifying these targets over the last sort of 30 years, hasn't there? Exactly. So, uh, you know, Snowline stems from the uh, the work of my father, Ron Birdall. Uh, he started prospecting in the Yukon in the 1980s and, uh, and you know, has tested out a lot of uh, very off the beaten path ideas, uh, trying to find new things, trying to find spaces where, you know, there's not competition, where we can really test these big blue sky ideas. And, uh, and I've been at it as well for, well, for a, a long time now. He's been dragging me out there since I was a little kid. And so, uh, you know, throughout this process, we have uh, put together some very big uh, claim packages and, and ultimately staked and vended out more than 1% of the entire surface of the Yukon Territory. So that's about, you know, an area of about 4,000 square kilometers. And with that, uh, well, we've gotten a lot of it back, but uh, not uh, necessarily because of uh, the exploration side of things, but more just the cyclical nature of the industry. And so when we launched Snowline, we had this huge data set and we still have this huge data set that we're building on. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're really kind of getting these projects back at the, at the perfect stage, just like teed up for drill hole discovery as, as we demonstrated in 2021. And we have a lot of, uh, a lot of fairway left to play. Mm. And in terms of your sort of cash balance, how's that looking? You've got a lot of exploration ahead. This costs a lot of money. How's, how are things looking in that, in that department? Uh, things are strong. We, uh, we raised uh, $7 million in, uh, in December. And so we're, uh, we're financed to, to do an uh, aggressive program out there this year. We have about $8.5 million in the treasury. And uh, yeah, looking forward to a big year. Absolutely. Um, and you've recently sort of added to your technical team as well. Tell us a little bit about who, who, who's on board there. That's right. So uh, yeah, we've, we've just uh, brought on uh, Thomas Branson, who is uh, a uh, geologist who has uh, run a lot of big programs in, uh, in British Columbia and the Yukon, a very experienced geologist and a, a bright geoscientist. Uh, so we're, we're very happy to have him as we kind of ramp up the logistical complexity and the, the program complexity to uh, have him helping out. And we've also brought in a, an operation manager, Steve Reynolds, who has actually uh, you know, got his start uh, out on the Anderson project as a soil sampler uh, back when we had it optioned out to another company. And you know, I've worked with him several times over the years and we had him as a camp manager out there and his, uh, the weight he pulled in terms of not just managing the camp, but managing logistics, uh, managing multiple field programs and so on. Uh, it is kind of one of those organic hires where it's just a natural fit. So, uh, yeah, we're really excited to have Thomas and Steve helping out and, uh, and the rest of the technical team here as well. Excellent. And so when, when do you plan to have the sort of drill bits turning again? And when can we sort of possibly start expecting results to start coming out? Uh, we're looking to get the drill turning. Uh, well, we'll mobilize in uh, mid-May and have the drill turning by around June 1st. Absolutely. So, uh, and then, and then, obviously, the situation around sort of assay labs and things like that are, are, are in that in that region. How, how's that looking? The turnaround time. Yeah. Uh, so, at the start of last season, we were actually able to get results back fairly quickly, and the labs have, you know, uh, said to us that they will be. Uh, well, they are clearing a lot of their backlog right now as we speak, so that's good to see. 
And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be back in a situation where we can rush uh, some critical assays right at the start of the season and get that sort of two week turnaround window that, uh, you know, we used to kind of rely on for for rushed assays. But uh, I guess we'll see where we are at that point. Um, at least we we know now that we're into some very nice systems and we know a lot more about the mineralization that we're seeing. So uh, we'll at least have something to go off uh, this year. Absolutely. Exciting year ahead for the company. And we look forward to seeing the results as they come out. But uh, thank you very much, Scott, for joining us today for this update. Thanks a lot, Leo. Thanks for having me.